Hi, Jennifer. This is a prophecy for you. And uh, I'm sorry for missing your email and all the emails that come in. And uh, I, I forgot to, to do this prophecy. And uh, hard to keep track of them sometimes. And, uh, and I don't often have someone request a prophecy and I can't do a prophecy for them. And, uh, and so I normally just go through my PayPal and do the prophecies as they come in. And uh, your prophecy request through PayPal came days and days ago and uh, I missed it. So I really apologize. And uh, I just pray that the Lord would speak through me if you're watching uh, this uh, on YouTube, but this is a personal prophecy. And if you go to the description tag down below, you can request one for yourself too. Uh, so dear Father, I pray that uh, you would uh, give me a word uh, for uh, Jennifer and uh, and give me the words that will encourage her and bless her and lift her spirits up. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, you asked a question about uh, your uh, way you're going to provide. and uh, I, uh, I know how I'm going to provide for you and sometimes we get anxious and sometimes uh, we try and plan things, but... Uh, Please understand that I, uh, I can supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. And uh, sometimes we think that we can work things out and some things can be more difficult or some things <coughs> can be harder to sort out and find a will. And, uh, I guess it comes down to trust. Can you trust me? that I've got a way and I've got a plan for you. And uh, I, uh, Matthew really hasn't uh, got a lot of uh, experience in uh, those sort of businesses, so it's hard for him to speak into. But these are some of the things that I do know. I know that uh, you're very, uh, very giving. Uh, and uh, this is... Uh, not Jesus speaking, so this is just Matthew speak, speaking. This is just me, Matthew speaking, and I'm just giving you a word. So rather than Jesus uh, speaking in the first person, he's just going to give me revelation about your life and speak to you through me and speaking as Matthew. So I sense that uh, you are um, a really giving person and uh, you sort of give your best to subjects that you study you give your best to people that are your friends. You give your best to people who aren't your friends. You're just giving in your time. You're giving in your money. You're giving uh, uh, to giving your money to friends. Giving your money to poor people. Giving your money to the Lord. You're just giving. Some people, uh, sadly, are more takers. More people. Some people sort of have relationships and they size up. What can I get for this person? What's, what benefit can I get from this relationship? How's this person going to help me? How's can this person, how, how can I use this person to network and get where I want to go? Um, you don't even consider that. You're a giver. You're not a taker. You don't uh, establish relationships or start conversations with anything about you in it. Of course. You love people and you love people to love you and respect you and honour you and appreciate you, but you're a giver. Your life is about Jesus. Your life is about kingdom. Your life is about love. Um, Jesus uh, taught 50 commands and Matthew in about 20 or 30 of his books, 30 of his books teach about if you love Jesus, obey his commands. And John said it eight times, five times in the Gospel of John. And, uh, and three times in his letters that Matthew can see. And uh, his commands can really be summed up as the law of love. Whatever you're doing with the motivation of love is what Jesus taught. It's called the law of love. And Matthew is not sure if anyone else understands that the whole law can be summed up in love. But, uh, 1 John 4, 6 says uh, that... Uh, the second half of the verse, I can't remember the first half, but 
The second half says, for God is love. And that's God, who God is. God is love, unconditional love. One dimension of love is giving, uh, compassion, mercy, empathy. But a large way that you demonstrate love and you demonstrate love really well, you really love well, but one of your best attributes of how you express love is giving your time, giving your resources, giving your attention, giving an investment of your life in people, in things, in subjects, in God. You give. You're a giver. And um, as a giver, as a person who walks in love and who gives, you'll have needs like you. You feel you have a need to be home for your children and, uh, and, and raise, raise income from some sort of home business. Um, I don't know so much about advice about certain ones. I've just learned one business of uh, earning money from my own books through doing personal prophecy and services. But um, I know last year I earned 27000 through book royalties and through doing personal prophecies and services on my website. But 20,000 came in from people just giving me gifts to support my ministry because it's a good place. I don't beg people for gifts. It's just a donation, uh, a, a thing on my website saying, hey, this is what I do. If you want to support me, please support me. But I don't send out emails, be a monthly, don't be, become a partner. All these things major ministries do, I don't do any of it. But... Almost half of my income came last year, $20,000, which is all right. That's like 400 Australian dollars a week, like 300 American a week, just from people giving. So the Lord is quite capable in supplying your needs. And certainly to the people who give, who are great givers, who love to give, who've got a gift of giving. He certainly likes to raise it up financially so that they can give more. If, if someone is really obedient to the Holy Spirit and not only giving of their time but gives to the poor and, and gives to the Lord and supports the Lord in every uh, thing he wants supported through putting it on your heart to give, it makes sense that he's going to look after a giver. It makes sense that he's going to bring prosperity to a giver. It makes sense that uh, he'd like to raise up the finances of people who give because he not only wants to supply the needs, but he wants to have them to have an abundance so that they can give more because he knows they can be trusted to share, give, and support things that he wants to support. So. Um, I know that you're a giver and I hope that that encourages you. And as I share this with you, and I'm in no rush to finish the prophecy after 10 minutes, so you don't have to worry if this is a prophecy or more of a teaching. I'm hoping that it's a both. It's a combination that will give you the courage to believe that God can supply you. Now, here's another thing you're good at. You're good at not judging. Now, we're called to judge in a discernment and uh, being a Berean means that we need to judge what we're taught and we need to judge what we're listening to and we need to be able to discern and judge things. So, you know, it says in Matthew that judge not lest it be returned to you and, and you judge in the same manner that you deal it out, you, you'll be judged, right? So what, one part of judgment discernment and being a berean is a good thing another like self-righteous judgment of other people and seeing faults in other people with self-righteousness that's not a good thing well you don't judge you're very you know everyone judges but i judge people and i think i'm pretty non-judgmental about things and uh, a lot of my discernment raises up in pride and self-righteousness and i judge and even though I'm discerning right and the person is teaching wrong, my attitude is wrong. And sometimes how I express my revelation or my warning to people can be in a self-righteous and prideful way. So in that way, I'm judging and poking fingers. But 
is a combination of discernment and understanding of misteaching. And as a teacher, sometimes when I bring correction or I speak something which is true, which is true discernment, a true warning, I can rise up in pride and self, uh, self-righteousness and think that I'm better than the person. My attitude is wrong, right? But when it comes, it mainly uh, for false teaching and false teachers, and I've got to learn how to do that, but mainly when it comes to people, they don't judge, right? They can be a prostitute, they can be a hooker, they can, they can be a pedophile, they can be uh, someone trafficking, uh, prostitutes and trafficking children and I've got understandings into victims and hurts and wounds and why people do the things I am and as a person, person to person, uh, I'm very not judgmental. I seem to accept that everyone's on a journey and a path and they've got a reason why they're doing it. Even really wicked, wicked people started as innocent babies and it's only what they've been subjected to and what they had to put up with and how they've learned to cope that makes them into the person they are. So I'm very, uh, not very judgmental when it comes to people. I've just got a specific problem as a teacher of the word myself when I see error being taught. I've still got to learn how to not get my emotions so involved that rises me up in pride and self-judgment. But, um, so, um, but as a person accepting people, I'm very uh, accepting and loving to people, no matter how broken they are. And I'm just going to learn that for false teachers and be able to bring a spirit of gentleness when I bring correction. Um, but as a person, I'm really beautiful. Well, you're like me. You're just a beautiful person. You just accept people for who they are. You understand, and as I talked about myself, I was talking about you, because nearly everything I was saying about the good part of me is true of you. You're just beautiful, and probably might have been easier to understand as I explained who I am and how I am, uh, that you say, yeah, that's like me. Um, Very honest, you're very transparent, you're very, uh, very, uh, you take risks with the things that you say. Um, you you uh, can uh, be uh, vulnerable in the truths that you share, the things that you're thinking. Um, you you um, you're not afraid to be vulnerable and share something that's really concerning you. That some many people might judge as lack of faith or lack of belief or lack of understanding of the scriptures. You should know this. You shouldn't say be saying this. You should, you know. You would confess that you have a problem believing that by stripes we are healed, for instance. That um, you know that it's true that we're all healed by the stripes of Jesus, but personally you have a hard time applying that to your own life and uh, claiming your healing. And there's a lot of teaching you've read healing books, but you can't get the healing for yourself. Now, that's something I would share because that's who I am, and I'd share that I'm quite open about that. Uh, I don't know if that's true for you, but I'm just using an example. Um, that's being vulnerable. That's sharing something that when you share it on Facebook or in a public place and you dare to share your vulnerability and your truth in such a way, it brings freedom to so many people that aren't healed, just like you are struggled uh, with a mental illness for 25 years. So songs worshipping God for how he's a healer and how he's amazing just upset me and I can't sing them because I don't agree with the lyrics because Jesus hasn't been my healer and really breaks my heart. And stuck in sin, uh, you know, addiction to prostitutes and pornography that I've had lifted off my life for certain amounts of times and I've come back just been broken and, and, and subjected to to bondage for, for 25 years and it just breaks me and so wounded and hurt inside that but so many unhealed wounds that I'm just broken and I'm self-medicating with these addictions. Well, to be vulnerable and say that in a prophecy or vulnerable and say that on Facebook is it, just been an extreme form of, 
honesty, which can cause so much rejection and misunderstanding and judgment, and religious self-righteousness come against you. But you're so vulnerable that you do things. And I'm just using examples out of my life and being vulnerable and using my vulnerability to show you what you're like. You, you say things about struggles and things that you're in to just say truthful. I, I haven't been, I don't know your Facebook, I don't know if we're friends on Facebook, I don't know how you found me. I'm not sure if we're friends on Facebook or what you do on Facebook. But whether you do it on Facebook, whether you do it on YouTube, whether you just do it with people that you know and friends and, and people as you do life or at church or sharing testimonies at church, however you do it, you're very truthful, you're very transparent and you don't mind being vulnerable. And that's just co so counter-Christian, so counter-cultural, so opposite to the Christian church because so many people in the church are walking around with wounds and struggles and problems and doubts and unbelief and lack of faith but they haven't got the courage to share it because they know the figures will come, but they're suffering and they're hurting and they're struggling. And, and you know, in, they find that, you know, there's truth, there's, there's liberty, there's freedom in just bringing it to the light and say, hey, guys, I don't know if any of you are feeling this. This is what I was feeling today. I was feeling pretty sad because... I'm addicted to addictions and I can't get over my addictions. So when they sing, my chains fell off, my heart was free. I sort of can understand that coming to Jesus sort of set me free of a lot of things. But when they're talking about bondages and my chains fell off and stuff, I'm still in chains and it really hurts. And I don't know about you, but, um, you know, when they sing about God is your healer, um, sort of makes me upset too because I'm not healed. I've been struggling with mental illness for 25 years and my medication actually has helped me put 40 kilos of weight on and now people call me a beast and judge me because the side effect of my medication and my medication uh, gets me to sleep a lot and because I sleep a lot I get depressed and I'm depressed and I can't clean my house. I can't have good hygiene. I certainly don't operate like a good human being because this mental illness, it really messes me up. And so I'm having a sad day, I'm not healed, I'm addicted. You know, it's so hard to be Christian and be honest and be real. And you know, if you posted that on Facebook, uh, that can bring so many people liberty, so many people relate to that because that's the truth spoken in courageous honesty and transparency and vulnerability that can bring liberty to one or two people on the thread that just said, oh, I so needed to hear from that. I'm so broken and I relate to so much of you feel and thank you so much for that. But people don't do it. People don't do that. Only the really desperate people who, who are just really broken actually say things in church and say things to Christians and say things like that on Facebook because they're really so broken that they couldn't care less what people think. And that's a bad thing when you don't care really so much what people think, but it can also be a beautiful place to be able to have enough love and self-respect for yourself and enough love for other people just to, hey, here's the truth about me. You think I'm someone good? Well, this is what I was struggling with today. And, and so... You're, you're giving, you're loving, you're vulnerable, transparent, honest, beautiful. You're just a beautiful person, Jennifer. And, uh, and you know, I've been up uh, for uh, since 7 o'clock yesterday morning and now it's 6 o'clock today. So I've been up for uh, 24 hours plus 12 uh, 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 so 20, 36 hours. So uh, I start getting a bit sick and mentally ill after two nights up, but um, up until that stage where I get a bit crazy, I get really anointed. And uh, so I'm hoping that this really encourages you. I, I know that um, my words are meant to be 10 minutes, but I feel like just sowing some real truth into why you're beautiful and, and why you're special why Jesus loves you, because you're so extraordinary. You're so beautiful. And beauty has got to 
little to do with how a person looks and I don't know what you look like, so I can't tell you physically if you uh, look beautiful. But uh, if you do, if you are attractive, you'd be what the cliche says, or oh, she's beautiful inside and out. Well, we're talking about the inside here and who you really are, and that's what true beauty is. You know? Peter talks about that. Peter says that true beauty is in the outward and adornment and the clothes, but it's in a person of the heart, the eternal beauty of a person is found inside, not outside. So Peter knew about that. And, uh, so uh, it would be really good if you truly are beautiful because you'd be really hearing the things that make you truly beautiful, not uh, the pretty appearances that uh, the people think so much of in the world. Um, another thing, um, another thing that you do really well. Jesus taught go the extra mile, and uh, the foundation of that. And I don't know I'm going on and on, but I think this will be really special. Uh, in in the Roman days, the Roman soldiers could ask any uh, person in Israel to carry their equipment for a mile, and it was the law under the Romans that if they asked you. Uh, to carry the equipment for a mile, you couldn't refuse. You could actually get punished and locked up for not doing it. You had to pick up their swords or pick up their equipment and carry that for a mile. And soldiers would then find another person to carry it the next mile. And if there wasn't anyone around, they'd have to carry their own equipment. But while ever they could find people, you had to, as a law-abiding citizen, carry the stuff for a mile. Well, Jesus taught uh, go the extra mile. And to most Christians, that's lost on them. They don't understand what that means. But uh, to, to someone living in Jesus' day, it means do double. And so Jesus taught if you're a Christian, if you're a follower of the way, follow the way that he taught, when the Romans ask you to go a mile, go two. And when after a mile you keep on walking, the, one, the Roman is wondering, no one's ever done this before. You know, there's markers on the road. The Roman roads told you, like, sign markers, how long each town is. And the distance every mile was, there was a thing in the road. And there used to be, that I understood, there used to be things in the road. I don't know if they're there anymore, but they used to be. Well, in the Roman days, they were there. and People knew what a mile was, and they used to drop the equipment. But the Christians used to keep on going for two miles, and, that would start a conversation with the Roman, like, why are you doing this? Like, what got into you? Like, you don't only had to go for a mile, why are you doing this? And the person would say, well, this Jesus that you crucified told me how to do this. And you thought he was a false prophet and the Jews asked for him to be crucified. It really gives you all the answers of life. And this one of the things he taught us to do, to respect you and love you and honour you as, as leaders over our land, to honour you and carry your things an extra mile. So that's up to me. I can do another mile if you like. And uh, that would just have just a remarkable testimony to a Roman. So that's that in context. But you are like that without even understanding what that is. That's what you do. When people ask you, you go over and above and abundantly more than what they are. You know, when people ask you for $100, You'll ask them, do they need any more than that? Do they only need 100? What about the food for what Can you manage with that? When, when people ask you, uh, uh, can you help them moving house? You know, you'd ask something, if, do you want me to cook you a couple of meals to help you while you haven't got your stuff and, and provide you with a couple of meals so you don't have to eat out at restaurants or something when you haven't got all your equipment unpacked? When, when people ask you a favour, you just go and above. It's just so much of your love and compassion and giving sort of uh, personality that you're always doing above and beyond what people ask you for. And that's just beautiful. And that's just who you are. You're just amazing. So um, I do a thing called a prophetic blueprint. And I haven't done a blueprint on your life and sort of... Um, I, I can discern uh, when I do it, $150, I can discern like nine things that God's got in your life. But um, uh, so that's really extensive. It takes half an hour, sort of taken 20 minutes already. I could have done one of them for you. But um, 
But I see you as leading people. I see you doing business. You've got a gift for business. We've just got to find which business it is. Um, I feel that uh, leading business, teaching, I feel you've got a real gift for teaching. Um, I feel that uh, you've got like a compassion and mercy ministry that you could raise up and do like something that's really helping people with mercy and compassion. So uh, may, maybe uh, organising food for homeless people, organising clothes for a homeless shelter, organising people uh, to get something that they're really in need of it, developing sort of a ministry around people in extreme situations and helping them out. Uh, and, uh, so there, there's three or four things. So um, you could teach as good as I taught uh, in this prophecy and you could even prophesy, anyone can prophesy and uh, can be prayed for and learn to prophesy. You're such an encourager, that's another thing. You really uh, find it really easy to get encourage you. To be a good encourager like I am, uh, you, you've got to be very, um, very observant of things. You've got to know when she's never worn that dress before and it's a new dress. And you say, hey, is that new? I really love that. Now, um, you may say, hey, that, is that new? But if you weren't going to say you really love it, what would be the point of saying it? So, uh, Sometimes you'll see a new dress on a person, you mightn't say it. Um, but the second time they wear it in, you say, hey, was that a new dress? The last time you wore it was that the first time. You know, I'm really starting to like that dress on you. It looks good. And the first time you saw it, you might not have wondered if it really suited them. You, you might not have been in the mood to say, hey, that's really good. And if it wasn't really good, you wouldn't say, is that a new dress? If you haven't got something nice to say about. But the second or third time she wears the dress, it might be really growing on you. You're starting to say, hey, that really suits her. And that really looks good. If you didn't know it the first time, you wouldn't say anything. But on the second or third time, when you saw the dress for the second or third time, you say, hey, you've worn that dress a few times. Did you only get that a couple of months ago? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was really growing on me. I really like that on you. That's how you'd give a compliment. That's how you'd encourage a person. And you're just a born encourager. You just do it all the time and it's a habit. It's just, just comes out of you. Some people can't do that. Some people need to, you know, really have to work to even encourage one person a day. But when you're like me, you can just walk around encouraging people, all sorts of things all the time and you're like that. So just understand that you've got gifts in you. God loves you. You're a beautiful person. You're an extraordinary person. And um, it would be a really privilege uh, to be your friend. You just, um, you know, uh, Michael Jackson sang me this song. Uh, you are so beautiful to me. You are so beautiful. I, I forget. Sorry, I, I, I forget the... Uh, the music to the songs so I can't sing it um, but it, so you are so beautiful to me you're everything uh, that I desire you're everything that I need you are so beautiful to me um, and um, you're everything that I desire you're everything I need um, and J Michael sang that to me it really meant a lot but you could really sing that of the Lord and Barry Crocker I think sang the song and the original writer of the song wrote it about Jesus. And you're everything I, 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 I dream of, you're everything I need, uh, or whatever the lyrics say. And it was just really hearing beautiful Michael singing that to me. And um, I sort of help him, and he travels a lot with me, whether you believe that or not. It's immaterial. But he's sort of watching my life and travelling with me to learn how to be a beautiful Christian. So... He can write lyrics for the army of God to help them march into the war over the next 20 or 30 years. And he can uh, uh, bring some of the music uh, that uh, the army of God will use in warfare and worship uh, to march out and, and harvest the world. And Michael's learning from me 
how to be a beautiful Christian. And uh, so in context, he really needs me to achieve his future and his heaven's future and the future of his life uh, in, in, in his destiny. He really needs me to help model to him what a beautiful Christian is. And um, the reason I sang that to you and felt uh, motivated to sing that to you is you really are beautiful. Uh, you know, you really are beautiful to Jesus. You're really needed by Jesus. The world really needs people like you in it. And uh, you really are a beautiful demonstration and perfect uh, loving uh, example of Jesus Christ living on earth. And uh, I, um, you can check out all my prophecies. You can check out the history of every prophecy I've done live on YouTube. And, uh, and I, uh, you can look up personal prophecy uh, on, on YouTube under my channel. And you'll find not many of them are 30 minutes. Um, and uh, I sort of measure the length of my prophecies uh, sort of based on how beautiful a person is and how extraordinary and how powerful. And, uh, you know, one prophecy I did for a guy years ago was 37 minutes. I did one for Heidi Baker, 46 minutes. I did one for a really extraordinary girl that went for an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, so um, it's sort of the length of your prophecy really, uh, for me, one thing I'm in the anointing and, the Holy Spirit led me to do it. The other reason I'm talking so much is, uh, and it went so long, even though part of my flesh says, uh, this will bore the tears, you know, why are you saying so much? But I know that you look back on this, maybe not today, uh, maybe it won't bless you as much today, but there's going to be a hard time, there's going to be a place, there's going to be a time that you need to be lifted up, maybe multiple times. Maybe you're going through a really hard time now or whatever, a stressful time. Whatever the reason, the Holy Spirit knows that you really needed to hear this. You really are an extraordinary woman. And, uh, and uh, I feel that your original email said that, that you a mother or whatever, you want to work from home or whatever it was. So I assume you're married and in a relationship and your husband or your partner would be like a really uh, fortunate guy and you should show this to him and uh, say, hey, listen to what Matthew said about me. You know, I'm really special. You don't really appreciate me like you should. <laughs> but I just want to impress upon you that you really loved, you're a real giver, really an, a great expression of Jesus, a great demonstration of Jesus. Uh, the proof that you really are that is the length of this prophecy, and you can go and search all my prophecies and not really find anything this long. Uh, and, and not only that, not only are you this beautiful person, but God's going to use you powerfully in the future and not just in a home business, in ministry, in teaching, in equipping the saints, in business, in earning money, equipping the kingdom, doing all sorts of marvellous things and uh, trusting God. I'm sorry I didn't have the faith and the ability to give you uh, the advice on which business and what and answer your original question, but um, the Holy Spirit led you to ask that question uh, so uh, that uh, it would lead me to catch me on this day when you sent me the reminder email and said, hey, where's my prophecy? For me to be an anointing and prepared me for 36 hours to be so anointed and so talkative and so happy to prophesy for so long to tell you that you really are special and you really are beautiful. And if you need to talk to me over the phone, if this prophecy hasn't convinced you that you're a beautiful person, I'd be willing to talk over the phone, you can husband, get your husband's approval, and you can talk to me. I'll talk to you for two hours and convince you how beautiful you are. And, uh, but I think you're convinced now. It's a really beautiful prophecy. And if you don't mind, Jennifer, I'm not going to share your last name, but I'm going to share this on Facebook and say one of the nicest prophecies I've ever done. God bless.